David Art Supply in Metairie, Louisiana, I picked up a set of Jack Richson Artist Semi-Moist Watercolors. These were being sold with the student watercolors. And they are very similar to the also distributed by Jack Richson Yarka Watercolors. Now, the pans in the uh, Artist Semi-Moist Watercolor set are quite a bit smaller, but this little package holds a neat surprise in that these are double stacked with one tier coming out and the other one not. Now, the brush that has been included, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that because I'll show it to you guys. We'll dip it in water, but this thing is clearly not a good brush. Even wet, it still splays out. You wanna avoid watercolor brushes that do that. So in today's video, we're doing a swatch and unbox, although I have a feeling these are going to be of high enough quality that we're going to also do a field test video. So I've got my watercolor paper. I just need to grab a brush to do the swatching with. And I've got here a Utrecht Red Sable. It's a synthetic brush. And unfortunately, my spray bottle is not on the table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate each palette by dabbing in some water. And this is actually a very generous amount of water. And I paid under $8 for these watercolors. Now, if you're watching this video and you live in Louisiana, if you live in the greater New Orleans area, I really would love it if you would head on over to David Art Supply. They're not a sponsor, but I have been a customer for over a decade and they're one of the few privately owned, privately operated art supply stores in New Orleans, Louisiana. So this isn't a sponsorship, it's just an endorsement and I want to see them continue to operate and I give them my business anytime I'm in the, oh, what the heck? This is like so much weaker than those Yarka watercolors already. Maybe that's just the black. Blue's a little bit better. Sorry about that. Got immediately distracted from my little plug. Oh, some of these are kind of opaque too. I'm gonna have to do an opacity test with these. Interesting. A little weaker, it seems like, than the Yarka watercolors. Well, that's a Venetian red for sure. Could actually paint Kara without having to do any color mixing. And if you're interested in how that eight color set, is it eight or is it 10 color set I just showed you guys, the Yarka set, if you're interested in seeing how that shakes out, you should check out that video here on this channel. I also include a tutorial for how to paint with a very limited number of colors, which is great if you're a beginner artist or if you know a beginner artist. And it is part of my affordable art supply series. And it is my current rec if you are a parent who's buying for a young but already gifted artist or just a young artist who's very passionate. Basically any kid who you know is gonna be sticking with art for a while, even as just a hobby. Something a little nicer than Crayolas or Creatology. All right, so some of these colors are better than others. And I have a feeling we're going to be doing a an opacity swatch test, but also a field test. So I'm gonna let these dry and we'll check in after they've had a chance to dry. All right guys, so these have had a chance to dry or mostly dry. You guys can see some shiny. A lot of that shiny is from glycerin buildup. So these contain a fair bit of glycerin in them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do an opacity test. So I need to grab a waterproof marker. And normally I would use a Sharpie because those dry almost, actually I could use a black Copic because it's gonna dry immediately. It doesn't have to be alcohol proof. It just has to be waterproof. So we'll use a black Prismacolor. 
And for you parents who are watching this video, trying to decide what to get your kids for Christmas, especially those of you with artsy kids, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. I'm working on several gift guides to help you find an art present that's gonna wow them. So we're testing for opacity, and that is an important quality. It's particularly important for watercolors who like to do a lot of layers in their watercolor, but it may also be important to your kids. So opacity can have a couple of different implications on your piece. It can affect the order in which you layer your colors or how you glaze your colors or even how you apply your colors. It can also affect whether or not colors end up muddy and gross. Now, these little cakes have so much glycerin in them or whatever binder they're using. I'm assuming glycerin because glycerin is a really common binder in inexpensive watercolors, but they have so much of that binder that you guys can see it's really coming up kind of gloppy and gloopy and just very glue-like, not a great quality. Ooh, still some yellow on there. It also makes it hard when my synthetic brush is picking up so much color, it's actually making it very difficult to wash all of that out. And it probably consumes a lot of your watercolor pan as you go. That said, for very young children, there aren't really a lot of great art supply options. It's not exactly a market that gets catered to. You guys might think, oh, but what about Crayola? Crayola does make some excellent products. Their watercolors, however, are extremely lacking. And if you're wanting to buy for say a teenager or um, a preteen who is very serious about wanting to make comics or wanting to do illustration, then Crayola mm, is really makeshift for your needs. All right, so that is the opacity test. While wet, you guys can see some of these colors are fairly opaque. Move that out of the way. That light lavender is obviously going to be very um, opaque. The white is surprisingly not. The lavender is more opaque than the white. The skin tone, the Caucasian skin tone is also somewhat opaque. And um, in fact, most of the colors are with white being shockingly not opaque for a white. Now, usually they include a white like this, not so that you can make corrections, but so that you can mix pastels, y'all. I mean, there are some use cases where that is necessary, but y'all, you know how you mix a pastel with a transparent medium? More water, not necessarily more white. So I'm always kind of like, why are you including white in palettes like this? Especially because there isn't, um, there's a light purple, but there isn't a good solid purpley purple uh, that would normally be referred to as dioxine purple, something like that, or Tyrian purple. There isn't a true purple here. Um, there isn't even really a true red violet. And uh, we do have a warm blue, a cool blue, a cool green, a warm green. No, no, I'm sorry. That's the cool green, that's the warm green. Two different browns, cool red and a warm red, a warm yellow and a cool yellow, an orange. So there is, there is some thought, it seems like, to what colors were included until you get to that purple. That's okay though, we're going to do a field test with these. We're gonna find out together how well they mix. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you guys about this palette and I'm gonna actually remove the second tray, or the first tray out and hope that this doesn't gop over. It comes with mixing instructions for how to make all your basic color blends. And it also includes a list of primary, secondaries, and tertiary colors. And it recommends that the inside of the cover be used as a mixing tray. So that's pretty neat. And that is no bad deal for $7.95 from David's Art Supply. And it's even small enough. Oh, I already got some gooping, gooping going on. 
It's small enough that you could even use it as a travel watercolor set. And it's inexpensive enough that if something happened on your travels, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You could replace it quite easily. So I look, oh, you can also very easily, without it being broken, that's always a key, you can actually remove the lid so you can go wash the lid separately or uh, remove the stickers if you want. So kind of a neat little set. You get a lot of color. If you're the sort of person who was thinking about buying those Artist Loft cakes, and you may have seen me review them here on this channel, I would say this is a much better deal. I don't understand why these aren't more popular with brush letters because the colors are very, very vibrant and many of them are pigment based and it's very inexpensive. So I hope you guys will keep an eye out for my field test for these watercolors, especially if you or someone you love or someone you know is interested in learning how to paint with watercolor. And if you're looking for more information on watercolor, including a free, F-R-E-E -E free watercolor course, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series. So I will see you guys later and I hope you all have a good day. Bye.